Welcome to Worship with Ascension Lutheran Church in Towson, Maryland. I'm Pastor Nancy Kraft, and I am here with Maya Bong, Linda Starner, Andy Bauer, and Joy Bauer, Ascension's Minister of Music. Today, we lift up our generosity team. This is a new group at Ascension that began meeting last January. Team members are Cheryl Fiery, Lugene Hall, Susan Hollinger, Al Pribula, Deborah Ward, and myself. Last week, a few of us got together for a discussion about good stewardship decisions in how we give to the church. Hi, I'm here tonight with um, a couple other members of the generosity team at Ascension. Do you want to introduce yourselves, guys? I'm Deborah Ward. Um, Al Pribula. We're here tonight because we've heard some people in the congregation who have been asking about different ways to give to the church and what might be the best way or the most helpful way for the church. Um, first of all, we just want to say, if you're giving to the church, we appreciate your generosity no matter how you give. So please don't hear us that we're saying there's only one way we want you to give, but we would just want to lay out for you what some of the advantages and disadvantages of different ways of giving are. Well, when I first started giving at church, I just gave money. And it was basically throwing money in the plate and not even uh, getting, it wasn't intentional giving. And since I've become um, a more mature Christian, um, I started giving through checks. Um, uh, giving by cash or by check, the sort of traditional methods, uh, that's perfectly fine. There's no, no real problem with it. But... Uh, it does take some time on the part of the church staff and volunteers to do the money counting. <clears throat> so that's a, a bit of a disadvantage there as opposed to some kind of uh, direct giving, uh, like simply giving or realm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I like reoccurring because you you don't have to remember it every week it just happens and it's it gives dependability to the church the church can get right. a sense mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's an important where factor. They are. um because uh, be, being on church council we get a treasurer's report every month and uh <clears throat> and it's always a nail biter getting down toward this time of year um because a lot of people do a, a big year end gift but uh the uh the people that have been doing a regular recurring sort of giving, um, it, that definitely helps, you know, evens, evens out the church income throughout the year and, uh, and makes planning a little bit easier. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about simply giving. Um, a lot of people in the congregation have been giving this way. It is an automatic draft. Um, you fill out a form, and there are different ways you can give. You can give once a, um, a month or every week. You get to decide all those things. Well, I, right now I'm on Simply Giving, uh, but one and I, the way I set it up was to do uh, uh, first of the month and fifteenth of the month, because at the time when I was working, I got paid every two weeks, so that sort of fit in. Uh, but then I found out that uh, every time. A deposit is made through simply giving. There's a charge to the church. Yeah, that little transaction fee for simply giving. Um, we actually know that if you use Realm, there's a way around that. So let's talk about Realm. I use Realm. You use Realm. I, like it. I love it. It was real easy to sign up. I just went to my computer and I signed up. I where on your computer? Where did you sign up? 
I, well, I signed it up on our donate <laughs> button on our website. So you go to the website and that button that says give. Yes, okay. yes. And I signed up through there. I told it how often I wanted to give, how much I wanted to give. And it asked me which projects I wanted to give to. I give to the general fund and I give to the And um, and when we have a special campaign, I can also give to those special. It makes it really easy. I don't even have to think about it. It comes out um, after, uh, right now I'm giving once a week, but I'm going to once a month now. Okay. So there is a, a the advantage of Realm over Simply Giving. One of them is that you have a way that you can offset that little fee that's charged to the church per transaction. Yep. Um, Al, you want us to talk, say something a little about that? On yeah, the computer. Yeah. Certainly an advantage to, to Realm is that you can, can sign up without filling out a paper form. You can change things, you, whatever. So, um, <clears throat> and you. Just, yeah, there is an advantage because you can, uh, if you're on Realm, um, you can, uh, cover those processing charges that the, that the church gets charged, you can add a little bit extra on top of your regular donation to offset that. So that's a, yeah. a helpful thing for the church. Do you do that, Deborah? Yes, I actually just check a box and say, I the processing fee. Uh, check a box that says you'll cover it, okay. I, as I recall, I did it at the beginning of the year, and I think it's a dollar seventy or something like that every donation. You don't have to check the box each time, it just automatically does it now. No, and it actually tells me every time I give when they take the money out. And one of the things that I like about Realm is I can track my giving through Realm. Yeah, so you can always go in and look at your every statement, right? Week mm -hmm. I know how much that I've given to the church for that week and for the year to date. Now, the big catch for doing this through Realm is you need to sign up for Realm in general. And Realm is the church's software program, and it gives you access to other things. Um, you know, like if you're on a committee, it helps to be a part of Realm, or you can get people's telephone numbers and all kinds of stuff like that. But the big thing is that's where we keep track of all of our offerings. So to but it's confidential, though. Nobody it's confidential. No one else sees it. Like, I can't go in on Realm. I can go in and find out your address and your birthday, yeah. but I can't yeah. find out what your offerings are that's close to me or anybody else, um, except for the bookkeeper, of course, who works with that. Yeah. And so, I, love, I love Realm now because I just hit the button, your phone number, and it rings your phone number for me. And if I need to... Oh, yeah. To Pastor Nancy's house, I just hit your. <laughs> oh well, now I don't know if we want to put that out there for everybody. To know. <laughs> but in order to join Realm, you need to contact Sue Hartman, our parish administrator, and then she sends you an email. And with that email, you can get on Realm. There also is an app for Realm that you can get on your phone. It's called Connect. But it's probably the easiest to first join on your computer before you think about doing anything on your phone. More and more people in the congregation are a part of Realm, so this is an easy thing for them. And if you aren't, now's the time to take the time to do that. But again, there are some advantages to Realm, as we mentioned. Um, you're able to change it at any time. You're able to offset if you choose to. You don't have to, but you are able to offset the fees if you would like. Um, so of all of the church, of the ways of giving right now, our generosity team is encouraging people to give through Realm for those reasons. But again, if you give any way that you want to, any way that you're most comfortable, your offerings are really appreciated. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
a bit of an update on the basis of that discussion. This week, I switched my method of giving to the church from simply giving to realm. And Deborah was right. It was simple. Each week as an online community, we set aside time to confess our sin. For some, sin is hurting someone else. For others, sin is creating a rift between people. Sin may be our own self-induced separation from God. However we understand sin, let us offer to God what lies heavily in our hearts this day, first in silent prayer. O oh, holy God, we, we know, know we have fallen short. We turn, turn our backs when we put in grace. We remain silent, silent when, when we could speak. We speak when we could listen. We, we close the door when we could fling it wide open. We, we judge when we could seek understanding. We claim when we could give. Forgive, Forgive us, O oh God. For being so very human at times, and help us to continue to grow into the people you created us to be. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you.
Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full, a terrible end. He will make of all the inhabitants of the earth the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had rece received the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. 
You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy servant! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We keep on waiting, waiting on the world to change. That's how the song written by John Mayer goes. And it's how life feels for many of us these days. We keep on waiting, waiting for the world to change. We may not know exactly where we need to be, but we know that we're not there. So we wait. That's the situation Jesus addresses in today's parable. So let's dig right in. It's easy to get thrown off by the word talent, which is used in Jesus' parable. For us, a talent means a special ability that you have, like you have a talent for cooking or you have a talent for music. But that's not what a talent means for Jesus' original hearers. A talent was an amount of money. The vineyard owner in the story goes on a journey and asks his servants to take care of his money for him while he's away. So how much money are we talking about here? A lot. In Jesus' day, a talent was the equivalent of 15 years worth of wages as a laborer. 15 years. Nothing to sneeze at. Even the servant who is entrusted with the one talent is receiving almost as much as he would earn over the course of a lifetime, taking into consideration the fact that people didn't live as long back then. And the servant who receives five talents receives far more than a lifetime's worth of pay. 75 years worth. This vineyard owner is extremely wealthy. Even so, it appears that he's a little loosey-goosey with his money. He leaves his servants no instructions whatsoever for how to invest it. So apparently, making lots of money isn't really his primary concern. What's his deal? And why are the servants given unequal amounts of money? Jesus says they were given each according to his ability. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but it doesn't seem fair to me. And yet, the master must have known quite a bit about his servants because his reasoning bears out. The two who were given the most invest the money and double the amount. This pleases the vineyard owner. But he's so angry with the servant who took his one talent and hid it, returning to his master exactly what he originally received, that we have to wonder what's up with that? And how is it that the one who was entrusted with the least ends up with nothing, while the one with the most ends up with even more? 
definitely not fair. There is more than their net worth that separates these three servants. The third servant explains his actions by saying, I was afraid. From his perspective, he's been given the least amount of money and he needs to play it safe. So he buries the talent rather than risk losing it. But he misses the point because he doesn't really know his master. He assumes that the master is in it for the money. And that's not what the vineyard owner is about. He is equally pleased with his first and second servants, even though the first ends up with 10 talents and the second with four. What matters to the master is seeing that the servants try to make something more out of the gifts that they've been given. Last week, we heard the parable right before this one. It's about the bridesmaids who were waiting for the bridegroom to appear. When he finally did, some were able to greet him with their lamps trimmed and burning, and some were out of oil and out of luck. But what does it mean for us to be ready? Today's parable lays it out. We just don't wait around twiddling our thumbs. We don't passively sit with our talents buried in the ground. We actively work to put to good use all that's been entrusted to us. The vineyard owner in the parable never asks more from his servants than they're able to give. But he does expect each one to give to his fullest potential. He expects active responsibility that takes initiative and risk. Remember that even the one who was entrusted with one talent was given a lot. They've been generously and lavishly gifted by the vineyard owner, each in their own way. He wants to see what they do about it. This parable takes on new meaning for me during this time of the coronavirus, when it feels like many of us are literally hiding ourselves away while we wait for the world to change. There is a definite appeal to going home locking the doors, turning off the computer, unplugging the phone, curling up with a good book or watching Netflix, ordering everything that we need from Amazon and keeping to ourselves. We're hunkering down, waiting until things get better, waiting until there's a vaccine, waiting until someone who knows what they're talking about tells us it's okay to, to rejoin the world. I know that sounds extreme because most of us aren't living like that these days. We're out and about wearing our masks, doing whatever we can to return to our lives. But even when we're physically engaged in the world, there is still this feeling of cautiously waiting for this cloud of the virus that hovers over and around our lives to be lifted. We are collectively holding our breath, waiting for what's next. It's a careful way to live that actually has a lot of merit for us from a physical standpoint. But it's not a good place for us to be spiritually. It's burying the gifts God has entrusted to us while we wait for a better day. God's reign does not come to a halt because of the coronavirus. God has generously gifted us so that we can generously put those gifts out into the world where they can grow. Our money, yes. And our time, our abilities, our acts of compassion, our works of justice and inclusion of others, our creativity, our capacity to love. Do you feel like you're holding back right now? Are you trying to protect what God has given you? Jesus wants us to know in this parable that God is generous with us so we can be generous with others. That fear isn't going to cut it. 
that we can step out in faith, that we can dare to risk for the sake of others, for the sake of ourselves, for the sake of the gospel. It's time to unbury all that God has entrusted to us, to honor God and do God's kingdom work now. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Each petition ends with the words, Hear us, O God, and the congregation responds, Your mercy is great. Lord of abundant grace, all that we have is a gift from you. We pray for generous hearts as we share the gifts you have entrusted to us for the sake of the world around us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature from the Chesapeake Bay to the Shenandoah Valley. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. 
scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. Today, we remember all who are in need of your healing power, especially Jim, John, Elizabeth, Dottie, and all we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. Lord of peace, we pray for our nation during this transition of leadership. Guide our leaders that all they do will bring healing and a way forward through the many problems we face. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is, is great. great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who has taught us to pray with these words. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. Amen.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.